Hello everyone, my name is Andrea. If you don't know me, you should subscribe. But today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up and telling you guys all about the books I read in September. I had a pretty good reading month. I read nine books in September, which I am happy about because at first I thought I wasn't going to read that much and then I picked it up and read a few more books than I thought. I will put the number of pages that I read on the screen right here because again, I forgot to count that up, but I am keeping track of that this year every month. I had some low ratings, but I also had some really high ratings and some of my all-time new favorite books I've ever read. So very excited to talk about these. I feel like I've just been evolving my taste and reading a lot more books this year that I love. I've had a good amount of five stars every month, so this one did not disappoint. And let's just get started with the first one I read. Also, if you want to check out my channel membership feature, you're going to click the join button down below to check out the different features I have now available on my channel if you want to help further support me. But anyway, the first book I read was The Temporary Roomie by Sarah Adams. This book is about Jesse and Andrew. Jesse is a um, woman who is pregnant, but her the father of the baby left her and she is basically going through this pregnancy alone. She also doesn't have anywhere to live because her house is um, going under some renovations and it's not safe to live there. So she has been living with her best friend. <laughs> Her best friend has a brother who has like a big house because he's a doctor. He's literally like a um, OB nurse. Like he delivers babies for a job. What is that called? I can't like recall, but he does that. And um, he has like a big house and a lot of room. So temporary roomy, she moves in. This one is a love story. It's a romance. It's supposed to be like a fluffy romance. I gave it two stars. I really didn't enjoy it that much. I have read one of Sarah Adams' previous books, um, which was The Cheat Sheet, and I loved that book so much. I gave it four stars. I thought it was the cutest thing ever. So I thought I would love this one. And then I also realized that this book, The Temporary Roomy, is book two in a series. And like her best friend's relationship was the first book, and I didn't realize that. So. I read the sequel before I read the first one, which was an accident, but I don't want to go back and read the first one because I'm not interested in that either. The main thing I didn't like about this book was that the author just said what the characters felt instead of showing why they felt it. Um, so like their relationship and why they liked each other just didn't come across as like that authentic to me. Um, and I don't know, I just, I didn't click. I didn't like it that much. That's why I got two stars. The next book I read was Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This book is book two in the Kingdom of the Wicked series and I didn't like Kingdom of the Wicked that much. Like I wasn't obsessed. I do think I gave it four stars but it wasn't anything super like outstanding. But I decided to go ahead and read this one because I did want to continue it. This one was gifted to me. Who gave this to me? Actually, I can tell you. Julie. This one was given to me by Julie last year. So I've had it for a while and I knew I wanted to read it anyway. Um, and the new book, the third one in this trilogy to wrap it up, came out this past Tuesday. And I need to get the book still and I can't wait because I ended up giving this one four stars. But I really, really loved it. We just got a lot more reveals. It was so angsty. Wrath wrath that's it that's all i gotta say so spicy i i really really enjoyed this book <laughs> it just led up to a great ending that sets up for a really like big grand finale and i cannot wait to read kingdom of the fear so this one is about wrath and amelia wrath is a prince of hell amelia is a witch um she practices witch magic and they end up getting tangled together in the first book she's trying to find out more about her dead sister and what happened to her and this is just a continuation of that so i do recommend the series because the books just got better and better and i feel like the third one is going to be really good based off of the reactions i've seen other people having to the third one <laughs> then i read archer's voice by mia sheridan archer's voice is like a soft boy tough girl or not really tough girl but just like soft boy romance trope um so archer has some trauma in his life that we learn about throughout the book and it's caused him to not speak he just doesn't speak so the way he communicates is sign language but everybody in his town like thinks he's a weirdo and they basically just outcasted him which is like really sad and so the main character moves to town and she's she knows sign language because her dad was deaf and so she can actually communicate with archer and she does and they form a relationship um in the way that the two of them can because they both have trauma so it was cute i did like it i gave it four stars just kidding, I gave it five stars. 
I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I give it five stars. Then I read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is the one where the two main characters are the best man and the maid of honor for their friend or their sister and brother's wedding and so they end up going on the honeymoon because the couple couldn't so they are not together and they actually hate each other like why i don't know but they hate each other and they go on this trip together and have to fake be honeymooners and i give this one three stars i am not a big fan of christina lauren their books just don't interest me that much they don't impact me and they don't leave me wanting to keep reading they don't leave me like loving them but it was okay it was entertaining and funny at times i did want to read it enough to finish it but it wasn't the best romance i've ever read and like i said i just gave it three stars and thought it was just okay then i read foul lady fortune by chloe gong and i was blown away like i was deceased i love foul lady fortune so much. Foul Lady Fortune is all about Rosalind Lang. She was a character in These Violent Delights if you have read that. If you haven't, you can still go into Foul Lady Fortune, but you will be spoiled for what happens in These Violent Delights and Our Violent Ends. So I actually read These Violent Delights. I gave it four stars. It was good. I tried to read Our Violent Ends, didn't like it, DNF'd it. Um, so when I read Foul Lady Fortune, I sure did find out what happened at the end of our violent ends at least i think i did i don't know there was some illusions I, i'm not sure exactly but it does have spoilers so just know that if you want to read Lady fortune but you can also read it if you don't care about the other two books you can go into it and read it for rosalind's story and that is what i loved rosalind is a girl that is angry like she gives the angry girl trope she gives such like the strong independent feminine lead and i love it so much um so rosalind is a nationalist spy she is sent on a mission with orion hong i absolutely love orion he is one of my new book boyfriends i claim him i love him so much um and so they have to work together and fake be married so spies fake marriage it's just everything to me angry woman it's so good like the world and her past choices and just her past in general has brought her to this point in her life and she has to reconcile with who she's become and why she is the way she is now and just deal with those feelings and deal with the shame and guilt and try to just move on with her life and then um another part of this book that i really like too is that rosalind's character is demisexual so she can only be attracted to someone when she really forms a bond with them and i like that rep in the book and there's also a, side, a bunch of side characters um like oliver celia phoebe and they all have their own little parts too it's told in like everyone's pov everybody gets a chance to talk in this book and i love it so much i can go on and on like i should have did a full-on review for this book but but i do have some exciting things happening like tomorrow i'm gonna go meet chloe gong so can't wait for that but anyway um yeah so i love Bell lady fortune i got an arc so thank you nagali for sending me that arc because it was the best thing i read in september and that book is out now if you want to read it so right after Bell lady fortune i was so blessed to have read set fire to the gods by sarah rosh and Kristen simmons i gave this one five stars as well i was just like back to back five stars back to back immaculate fantasies this one is more of a young adult higher fantasy than fellow fortune because in this one the characters actually have um abilities their different abilities um are drawn from like the earth like the elements so like wind air that's the same thing air fire earth things like that and our two main characters ash and maddox have their own point of views and they're told we're told the story through their two parts Basically, in this world, there are gladiators who um, fight in an arena to settle things between the gods because the rulers of the, this world and these different, like, cities or these different parts of the kingdom are gods. And so, um, each of these gods has, like, their own champions or their own gladiators that fight each other's 
gladiators and ash and maddox are on opposing sides of these little fights and so um there's a lot that goes into this book and it was just so good it came out a couple years ago this one um my friend therese actually bought me for my birthday like two years ago i think or maybe it was last year i think it was two years ago um and i finally got to read it and it's just so good like i am so thankful therese if you're seeing this that you got me this because she didn't know what it's about she just saw it on my wish list and i didn't really know what it's about and now that i've read it i'm just so happy and i I wish everyone would read it because I really really loved this and I loved the gladiator fights I loved the magic I loved Matic and Ash their characters were so 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 good so then I read take a hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert this is the second book in the Brown sisters trilogy it comes after get a life Chloe Brown I actually gave get a life Chloe Brown three stars it wasn't my favorite romance this one I gave four and I liked it a lot more I don't know why I just really liked Danica. She is just somebody who is so confident, sure of herself. She knows her worth and I absolutely loved that. The love interest in this one is Zafir Ansari. He is a security guard and he sees Danica every day and he is just already like in love with her um, or he likes her before he even knows it, before they are forced into a fake dating kind of situation. But it's more of a like mutual hookup, friends with benefits thing um but of course that leads to catching feelings even though Danica like she doesn't want to date she doesn't want commitment so that's like the big plot of the book is Danica not wanting to commit but Zafir just like really really liking her and he's such a like he is such a cinnamon roll for Danica and I really enjoyed reading about this couple they were friends first and just everything about them was interesting and funny and I loved it okay so then I read The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston I gave this one three stars I was not that impressed this one is about our main character, Florence Day. I forgot her name. Um, she is a ghostwriter for a really famous author named Anne Nichols, which in the book is like, she. the author mentions that she is like a bestseller, like up there with Nicholas Sparks, and she puts like actual names of other authors in it. So you know like how famous she is, whatever. So Florence is like the ghostwriter for a really famous author and um, this editor of the book needs her to turn in like the rest of a book or whatever like to finish their deal and then um Florence also sees ghosts like talks to ghosts and basically in this book she um meets the editor Benji well he ends up being dead and she ends up talking to his ghost this book just didn't hit the mark for me it was really cringy there was a lot of ways I feel like the author could have taken the fact that the main character can talk to ghosts and it was just very stagnant, nothing happened, the side characters were uninteresting completely. The love interest was also just his only characteristic and his only personality trait was that he instantly loved the main character and it was just like so insta love and he's like a 30 something year old man who's like described as super hot and he has like a super great job so i'm like why would he be single like that it doesn't make any sense why would he never like anyone before her and i just i didn't buy the romance and this is literally just a romance book so that just didn't do it for me and that's why i gave three stars and didn't really like it the final book i read was love from mecca to medina by sk ali and i love this book so much i got an arc of it it's coming out october 25th it is the sequel to love from a to z this duology is a young adult romance centered around zainab and adam they are two young people who meet by chance one summer when they are on like break and vacationing kind of they begin to get to know each other they share some commonalities they do like spark an interest in each other and i just love their story but more importantly i also love their individual stories and how both of these characters have a lot of complex thoughts and feelings and things that they want to do in life and ways that they feel about different things in life and it's just such a good love from mecca to medina i'm so glad i got to read that as an arc and like just enjoy it and i know not a lot of people i know have even read from love to a to z but i just think this whole two books are so good if you're looking for a young adult romance and just something that's so heartfelt and passionately written like the author clearly cares about these characters and has flushed them out so well and developed them so well and in book two there is like 
jealousy trope and I thrive on the jealousy trope okay um but there's also like a lot of feminism in this book and the main characters are both Muslim so literally in the second book the two characters are going on Umrah which is a pilgrimage to Mecca I'm still like trying to make sure I have the terminology right because I was basically just learning about these new things that I really didn't have any prior knowledge to about the Muslim community so that was really interesting to me and I really did enjoy just like learning about that um, as well as just diving more into the characters thoughts and their headspace and the things that they were doing and like all that stuff i just i get the feels like i just love it so much so if you haven't read love from a to z please read it because it's so good okay that is the nine books i read i hope you guys um got through that because that was a lot but let me know if you've read any of these or let me know your favorite read from september but that's all i read if you want to follow me on any of my social media i will have that link down below as well as a couple ways you can help support my channel like buying me a book off my wish list or donating to me on ko-fi or anything like that um but that's gonna be it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Three, two, one. <laughs> arguing again, arguing about something so simple. Make it clear, tell me why you're running back to him. Feeling insecure, feeling like there's more to your character. Every tear that you cry is worth it in the end. But baby, tell me, how have you not figured it?